Hi everybody, I'm Mom and welcome to Momda's Life Handmade. In a recent poll that I created on my community tab, I asked my precious viewers, my subscribers, what would they like to see and the maximum vote went to Trash to Treasure followed a little late by high end dupes so today i'm going to create trash to treasure video i'm using some very ordinary trash that each one of us have at home everything we have at home you need not get anything from outside and turn them into some beautiful items that you're going to treasure especially for this coming holidays and seasons for the festive vibes this is also a chic for cheap I'm participating today in the Chic for Cheap challenge that is being hosted monthly by Christy from Christy Creates and her this month's co-host is Nicole from The Week's Nest. I'm going to put links to both the channels and to the playlist of this month in the description box of this video. I have seen these mailboxes on internet everywhere, lots of sites, lots of online stores have mailboxes in different sizes, shapes colors, styles. Each one of them is unique and looks beautiful and very festive. For a long time I've been wondering how to engineer it, how to make it and I finally did it. You just have to get started and it just flows and happens. So today I'm going to make a mailbox, a Santa's mailbox using some trash at home. If you're new here, please look around in my channel which is about doing lots and lots of DIYs. Trash to treasures, high end dupes, everything related to home within budget. And if you love such content, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button given below the video and do it that little bell icon next to it with the ringing bell option so that you're notified each time I post a video. So I'm going to use a few trash items today. As I said, this is a paper bag that you get in many of the good shops and it's a lovely red colored bag and it's a good cardstock paper so I'm going to use this I have quite a lot of them accumulated in my home so I'm going to use this paper then I'm going to use this cereal box so almost everybody has these cereal boxes coming into their homes or you can use any of those cardboard boxes this is not very thick so it will be easy to cut even with scissors so I'm going to use this I'm going to create a mailbox so first thing I want that top curved edge of the top side of the mailbox I'm just using a lid I placed it I just measured and with this width so one has to uh, really adjust according to the size of box you have to decide how height how much of height you want or how much of width or depth you want so uh, using this which is approximately eight inches wide I decided to keep the height 8 inches and I marked it here and after oops, after I marked the tip I just found a lid placed it and marked a circle on it now before I cut it like the way we do with stitching I'm just going to mark a seam allowance and I'm going to cut it diagonally like this so when I attach the roof on top of it, it sits neatly. So similarly, I marked on the opposite side also and I'm going to cut around this edge. And then this is going to be one edge, say the front edge. So I just took a scale and the points where the curved lines came along. So along the same line, I have marked a straight line. So this is parallel to the base. Now for the back side, that is the most important thing. For the back side also, I will have a similar line. But I'm not going to cut here. I'm going to keep this whole length because I will turn it into the roof by curving this portion, back side portion, curve it along and overhang the front. That's what I plan. So let's cut this and then be back. Now this is what I meant. This is the seam allowance which I'll fold later like this.
over which my roof will come and rest. So this now, after I fold it, I'll realize how much length to king and then I'll cut it. So to be, one must always be careful before cutting things because then you cannot revert back. So this is going to be the framework. Now in the front, I want a little slit for the letters to be dropped in. Again, I'm taking, so this is going to be the final edge of the front side. Yeah, so just below it, one inch below it, I'm going to mark a line, say half an inch away from the edges. And make this slit, say about an half an inch wide so that it's easy to drop in the letters. So this is going to be the portion that I'm going to cut out for the letters to be dropped in. This portion I'll cut using a knife. So here we have a slit. How do you retract the letters from the box? So we need an opening here. So instead of cutting this whole thing out, which will weaken my structure, I'm just going to cut a rectangular window out of the space. So I made sure that this, okay, this portion has got a joint, so it will be difficult to cut out. So I'm going to use the other side of the box, which doesn't have the joints. This is the joint that I'm talking of. Uh, so I'm not going to cut this side. The other side doesn't have any joints. So I'm going to cut out a rectangular window out of this. From there, one can retract out the letters. So let's mark it and again cut this out using a knife. So here is the framework ready. So this is the front side with the pocket to go in, the lettuce to go in. These are the sides and they have this seams allowances like the uh, fabric and I have made cuts on them so that they fold in and form the shelf over which the roof will rest. Similarly on the other side and I have cut out a rectangular window on from this side from where the letters can be retracted. This is the back flap which will turn into the roof. So I'm going to slightly roll it. Yes, now it's better. So here. Now it can rests over the sides neatly. So this is how I intend this to. The structure is formed this way. Now I need to cover it with some paper. So I showed you the red paper. I don't want it. Uh, you can make it all red if you feel like. I thought I'll give the front and the back portion white. I'll keep it white so that you can add more things to it. And I'll just keep the sides red or maybe vice versa so that you have enough canvas to work with and it looks really festive. I'm going to cover this and then be back. So now I have the front white and the back white and I have cut out two pieces of red for the sides. Now what happened to the pocket? So I have already cut out the cardboard and I have glued the paper on it, made sure that I added glue to the sides properly and now I'm going to nick through this so that I can recreate this pocket back. So on the sides I'm trying to create a V so that I can fold the paper in till the edges. So not a neat work here but okay. So this way I'm going to fold the paper in and here 
and glue it from inside so that my pocket becomes a neat pocket like this. Now the back side also have attached, I have attached some extra paper on the front for the overhanging part. So before I glue the roof on top of this, I'm going to take this red paper which I covered, measured and cut it out and I made sure it comes till the tip and the base and slightly on the front. It's just going to make it look a little more nicer. Similarly on the other side. Now on the other side we have a pocket. So what I'll do is I'll glue this whole thing. I'm still planning to engineer the pocket. So I'm going to glue everything out and cut this rectangular piece of red paper out. And let's see then. Here the construction is ready. This is the flap, the roof, the sides. And on this side I have the pocket. Now this looks a little untidy but how to cover this? So I found this way out. So I took another flap of rectangular piece with a long strip. So this, I'm going to fold the strip in and this portion I'm going to glue it here. So it becomes a door like thing. So it can open up like this. And then here I've made a little slit here and which this flap can I'll glue this flap together so that it becomes nice and stiff so that this flap can just go in and lock the door when not required so that is going to be the plan so I'm going to add some glue and fix this door here so instead of hinges I'm using some glue and here we have it. And once dry, I can use this to go inside the slit. So I'll have to wait till this thing dries up. Now the flap is ready and dry. Now it's time for some decoration. So I'm going to use different printed papers in Jengham checks, some stamps and this beautiful printed paper with holy berry and gifts lace. I'm going to use them over this to decorate it using some decoupage glue. So here's my Santa's mailbox in red, white, some checks, golds and beautiful images and stamps over it. It looks little Mackenzie Childs inspired, it looks modern farmhouse. I think it just looks so cheerful and festive. What do you say? This is trash to treasure, this is chic for cheap, all in one. I think I really like my mailbox here. If you like this video, if you like my today's DIY, please give this video a thumbs up, share this video, share my channel with your creative friends and family and I thank you all so much for your time and support and I'll see you all very soon with my next DIY in my next video. Until then, stay positive, be creative and be happy.